Hello, everybody. We're back with another episode. This is the third episode of the Ambitious Views podcast, where we talk about films, television, and stories in a very unique way, in a very unique perspective of us. All right. So I'm your host, Corrigan, and here is my other host. That's Blake. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah so uh welcome back if this is your first time uh checking us out thanks for checking us out hope you've had to stay throughout the whole episode if you're returning appreciate you you officially ambitious views fam and um we're just gonna get right on into it okay so blaze i hope you're ready for this this or that for today i stay ready okay we're gonna see we're gonna see all right. Here's your this or that. <clears throat> Would you rather participate in the Hunger Games or Squid Games? <laughs> um, I would rather the Hunger Games. Oh. Because I can hide for a really okay. long time. Okay. And I mean, since the name of the game, I can either do what Katniss did mm -hmm. and be like, we're going to both die, or I can just poison the last person, mm -hmm. you know, pop out the nowhere and be like, hey, you that 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 bear you just ate, mm -hmm. you're finna die. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So you leaning on being able to hide. Yes. Okay. 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 I'm not going to fight people and kill all these people. No, I'm going to just hide. Let them kill themselves. Work yeah. smarter, not mm. harder. Because why not? I'm not. I, mm. I, I mean, I don't want to kill anybody, but, you know, oh. they don't give you a choice in Hunger Games. So. Yeah. Yeah, what you said. <laughs> 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 well, no. Well, no. That was, that was I, I didn't expect for you to quickly be able to figure out something or whatever. I got to come a little harder for next time. So, I told you, I stay ready. I don't have to get ready. Okay, okay. Bet, bet, bet. Let's go ahead and transition over to the watch list. What have you been watching lately? Well, you will be happy to know that I did watch Black Panther 2. What? Yes. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, I did. I watched it oh Saturday. Well, we got to come back to that then. We got to come back to that. We're going to cycle gonna, back. We're going to cycle back. <laughs> We yeah. Say, um, she, she went on and addressed it too, y'all, just because she saw on uh, our little document for today that uh, <laughs> my question was again: Has Blaze finally watched Black Panther two? So right, I'm gonna just just rip the bandaid off. I did. <laughs> I watched. Um, but the new season of Harlem dropped last week, and so um, watched those first two episodes. Great. I love what they're doing with the show. Um, I also recently watched, um, Netflix has like a documentary series called Untold and they look at different things. And I look, I've already watched the one about Malice in the Palace where um, the Detroit Pistons game where things went nuts. That was really dope. Um, but I watched um, recently the rise and fall of N1. Mm -hmm. I didn't realize that N1 one did not really exist like that. Um, anymore and I didn't know that they had such like a rich history and in, in mm -hmm. street basketball and stuff so it was cool to learn more about that it's on uh, Netflix um, and then you season four starts tomorrow February 9th and love is blind for my reality TV watchers um, after the altar for season three drops on Friday I think that's going to be interesting. That's going to be interesting. I need to kind of, I hope they give kind of like a recap because for some reason, certain moments I feel like is, oh no, now it's starting to come back to me. Yeah, it's, it's going to be very interesting. If the couples are still happy, you know. Yeah, I think that's going to be the most interesting thing. This was very, this was definitely very unique. This past Love is Blind season was very unique. Um in a lot of ways and then definitely even after I think the aftermath was probably the most intriguing out of all of the seasons so I'm very interested to see where they're going to go with that but that's pretty dope um Thank so for you. me 
we finally finished Death Note. Okay. For my anime fans out there, we finally finished it. And those of you uh, who have seen it, you definitely gonna know where I come from uh, when I say that. Man, it it was a long time coming, but we finally finished it. You know, I don't want to spoil it for those who haven't seen it because it's definitely mm -hmm. something very unique. And <clears throat> it's not even just because I don't want to don't want to spoil it. But really, it almost takes away from the show if I tell you too many details. But again, just in case you haven't seen the last episode that should be coming out pretty soon. Uh, basically, it's a main character who is pretty much like a whiz kid, but very chill in high school. He's a senior. His name is Light. And basically, while he's sitting in class, all bored, he looks out the window and he sees a book, a notebook just falls out of the sky pretty much. And basically it goes in, it's like, hmm, what's going on or wherever like that? And basically finds out after reading the instructions that if you write someone's name in that notebook, that they would die um, in just a few a few amount of minutes or more. You know, so it's it's pretty unique because it's like, OK, what in the world this guy is going to use this book for? Like what he's going to do, especially high school students. So it's very very unique, like like the the description within itself is kind of like okay, where's this gonna go? But once you get to you, like what in the world am I watching? So it's it's pretty dope. Highly recommend. It's a one one and done kind of thing. I don't know if it originally was more than one season, but as far as watching it, it felt like just one season. Uh, if you watch it like in dub or in sub individually, I think it was around like maybe thirty seven episodes, so not too many at all. And plus, like you know, the episodes are maybe like twenty minutes or so. So. So Death Note was pretty dang good. We Wait, do you watch in dub or do you watch in sub? It depends. I Ooh. I will say if I'm forced to watch it in sub, just because of my experience with Naruto, I don't mind watching it in sub because when we were originally watching Naruto, when they got to Shippuden to a certain point, they hadn't dubbed everything. And so we have mm -hmm. to watch the whole entire rest of the, the series in sub. So I don't mind it. And we have to watch Boruto in sub as well. So I kind of feel like long as you're like into the long as the show is good and you're into it, it does it doesn't really it shouldn't really bother you as much, I don't think. Cause I know like when we watched Demon Slayer on Netflix, we watched it in sub. But then once we transition over to Hulu to finish everything, we watch it in dub. Some people sometimes say it takes away if you watch it in, in dub or whatever. I don't know if my eyes are tricking with me, but it really don't make me any difference and stuff. And plus, sometimes I'm eating while I'm trying to watch or, you know, I am that type of person. Like, especially if I know it's doing a lot of dialogue, I am going to look at my phone or just yeah, whatever. That's, what I you know what that's why I don't like sub is because I usually do stuff while mm -hmm. I'm watching something. Mm -hmm. And so I don't I don't want to have to solely focus on that to make sure I know what's going on. Yeah. Like the reason why I got through Demon Slayer so fast is because I was watching it as I was doing my hair. So I could like listen to it. Mm -hmm. I didn't have to read it because I watched it in um dub. Yeah. Yeah. So I mean it depends because and I think that's credit to just anime. Like the dialogue alone is so intriguing. Mm -hmm. uh, at times to where it's just like sometimes you can look down you know or do whatever and come back but as long as you can at least hear it I feel like it's pretty cool like honestly I think I was thinking about Death Note I could see Death Note being transitioned into like a uh or transcribed into some type of podcast I can literally just listen to it and I feel like it would be pretty dang dope just because of the dialogue that's in it because it's heavy it's heavy dialogue it's not as heavy as like I feel like to a certain degree, Demon Slayer can be at yeah. times, but it's like the storytelling behind it and you just, your imagination, I feel like it'd be a really cool experience just sitting in the car, sitting in your office and just listening to things go back and forth. Um, I think it would be pretty cool. So, um, but yeah, so dub sub really doesn't matter to me, to me. So I know some people are really picky. To me, it matters. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Um, Do not recommend me an anime to watch if I have to read it. Oh, man. I won't watch it. Once you get into it, especially like, not, well, I would say this, especially for, well, it seems like they dubbed Demon Slayer pretty fast. 
I feel like now since you're into Demon Slayer, I could see you being willing to watch it sub. I could see myself watching Demon Slayer sub only because sometimes they be doing the most. And I just be like, shut up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm really, I'm really excited for the upcoming movie slash series. I'm I'm hoping it's it's gonna keep on living up to the hype that I've been hearing a lot of people talk about the manga with without really spoiling it for me. So I'm really excited to see what's next. Um, I've heard that pretty much these other two um higher up what well, other higher up ranked demons are like almost 10 times as worse. That's another thing with Demon Slayer. These higher rank demons are like unstoppable. <laughs> I just want to say Tanjiro is just a kid. Like come on man. <laughs> Yeah, can can sense. we go just where the, like why did they kill off the lower rank when those the ones he needed to go after first? Bro, like I don't know, I don't know. It's it's gonna be very interesting, but but uh, you know I'm looking forward to see how they go about it. I will say I feel like what I appreciate about Demon Slayer they're very realistic with the interactions of with the villains. Yeah, sometimes I feel like in some shows and movies they they just water down the villains just enough for the heroes to win and i appreciate them being i feel like more realistic mm -hmm. especially with the demons or wherever like that so kudos to them storytelling wise so um because tundra was toe up at the end of that day uh entertainment district uh, yes arc. he was everybody was yes <laughs> everybody like i think everybody had gotten stabbed cut something by that point man filet just all the above you know it's crazy but uh but yeah like so that's that's what i've seen it's really dope that you got to see uh the rise of fall the rise and fall of n1 that was really dope it was really cool to kind of look back and just try to like how see how everything behind the scenes kind of came to where it be as a a kid being a consumer because I remember the video game and all this stuff like that and, mm -hmm. and definitely growing up especially like from originally where I'm from like street ball was a thing you know and one was mm -hmm. a thing like you know hot sauce like super popular professor Escalade all of them so it was really dope to really see that. And um, I'm really enjoying the Untold series of Netflix. They're right, doing a really right. good job. And I un and I really appreciate the length of these yes. as well. It's yes. like straight to the point, very entertaining. And I like that it's not a limited series. Like yeah. it's like each one is just like a, a, a movie, essentially, mm -hmm. as opposed to like, I mean, the mini series documentaries are OK, but sometimes they don't get straight to the point. It's a exactly. lot of fluff. Yeah, exactly. So I I really enjoyed it. It's it's been one of my favorites and not the favorite. I think it's between that one. I think the Aaron Hernandez was very interesting, but there may have been a series though. I can yeah. I, I think, think that may was a series. That was a series. Well, besides that, uh, Malice at the Palace was definitely up there. Yes, definitely up there. I was like, whoa. So that was pretty good. And um, like I said, Harlem. We've only we only watched the one episode because we watched it kind of late. I think it was like Monday night, but I will say the first episode was wild. It was really wild. So I'm really looking forward to seeing um, the rest of the series. It's looking good, and honestly, just especially because I grew up with, they're really happy for Megan Good being able to get a show like this and and mm -hmm. stuff like that. Especially because she's been in the game for a very long time, pretty much since a kid, you know, right. and because she was pretty much a a little kid in the Friday movie. I don't know if you ever, for those who are Friday fans in the first movie, she was actually one of the kids that was trying to get uh, the ice cream or whatever like that from uh, Big Worm. So <laughs> so if you want to go back and check that out, she's actually one of the ones to do that. So she's been game for a while. So I'm really glad uh, this show is out there. It's kind of refreshing, which I think I mentioned this last time. It's kind of refreshing, kind of like a different vibe. Uh, kind of like Insecure did, you know, a while back. So I'm interested to see how this goes, and and all of the um the lead women that are in it, they bring in uh, just a really fresh vibe to like television and series. So just happy for them. Really dope series on uh, Amazon Prime. Um, 
One thing I forgot to mention that I really enjoyed last year in the first episode was the movie Nope. Um, Blaze, did you get to see Nope yet? Yeah, I saw it. I really enjoyed it. I feel like it was something very fresh, something new. And I um, I don't know. I don't know if it was just because it was a Jordan Peele movie and it was very unique and, you know, people had mixed feels of what they thought it was going to be and everything like that. And, but I really enjoyed it, man. It was just like something refreshing. Like I could see myself literally turn that on and watching it again, just sitting up at the house or whatever. It was really cool. First time I watched it, I was like, what did I watch? And so mm. then I did my research and I was like, oh, okay, that makes sense. And so I really should have just went ahead and rewatched it so that I could appreciate, you know, mm. everything I learned in my research. I'm going to be honest. I think this has been my favorite out of his three, to be honest. Really? Yeah, I might have to watch Get Out again. Like, I know, like, on a cultural standpoint, the fact that, especially the time that it came out, it was very, like, not on point as in, you know, whatever, but just on point of just, like, sometimes I feel like how we feel, like, like people want to want our culture, you know, our beauty and all this stuff like that so much that they're willing to do whatever it takes to take it just so they can be us in the vibe at times. You know, I get that, but just the, it's just so very unique, man. Like, and I honestly, I think this is my favorite movie that Kiki Palmer has ever been in for me. I think, I think I got another one for you, Blaze. Let me, let me see how you feeling. All right. So, and we'll put this out on our social media because I'm interested to see what everybody's going to be thinking. So what, Blaze, like, what is your top three franchises? Top three movie franchises that you got? What you got? When I think about top three, I'm thinking about, like, the movies that I'm going to rewatch over and over again. Mm -hmm. um, I probably know the words to them. I know pretty much, you know, each action seen all that so mm -hmm. my top three would have to be harry potter like okay i mean the the goats of of that particular genre um next i will go with scream it's crazy that i love a movie series that started i want to say the year i was born but that's <laughs> what i got big brothers for they they put yeah. me on but I love yeah. the screen series every time a new one drops definitely watch it waiting for the one that's dropping in march Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. then Spider-Man, but specifically the Tobey Maguire Spider-Man, because okay. he is the best Spider-Man. Okay, okay. And that's okay. not up for debate, so. <laughs> <laughs> but I also have to put a tie with X-Men, because I love the X-Men series. I like the first few, the first three, but I do enjoy, like, I don't want to say reboot, because they still kind of use some of the older people. They just mm -hmm. kind of told it from a different um time period and timeline but I, I i love that like the last three set start that started with x-men first class i mm -hmm. really enjoyed finding out about how magneto and charles met each other and mm -hmm. became friends um that was a really dope storytelling some there were some you know iffy plot points but overall those are movies that i'm gonna always rewatch if i see them on or just randomly dope 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 okay what cool. about you all right so i don't know if i mentioned this the other time but i've been on a rocky like individual like random marathon and we still got one more to watch which is rocky balboa which was the sixth one i believe that came out which i do remember watching it and overall it was pretty dang good um, for it to be years later, but I got to put Rocky as my number one. And the reason why, just watching it again, <laughs> like you were saying, something that came out way before I was born, um, just to be able to just see how that was produced and how, honestly, I feel like it was re it's really almost dang near timeless, especially the themes that's in that goes throughout the series and the fact that they was able to keep that type of level of production and writing and acting up um and different celebrities in and out and the celebrities fit in and the celebrities and big names at that time was in it it was just really dope and it's very relatable i feel like for me as well 
And so I definitely got to put Rocky, the Rocky franchise up there for me, especially if you even want to trail off into the Creed's which the Creed's have been hidden every single time. I'm looking forward to seeing Creed 3. So I got to put Rocky up there as number one. And that was just a recent thought, because if it weren't for that, I'd be right there with Blaze with my number two, which is Harry Potter. And, man, Harry Potter franchise, I mean, it's just hard to beat. Literally, mm -hmm. every single movie is different in its own way, but keeps up the same theme. It's literally... Even when you think things are not as like the other one, when you sit back and think about what was the purpose of that movie, you still got to give it kudos, you know, because even, you know, Half Blood Prince, that was very slow. But then the ending of it, it was all just kind of worth it. You know what I'm saying? And stuff. So so like definitely Harry Potter for number two. And it just got better. I honestly would say I don't know about you, Blaze, but honestly, the my favorites were the, the favorites of the whole entire franchise was the last two other franchise mm. seven and eight for I me mean, i know i really like definitely hollow my favorite is prisoner of azkaban but i do like definitely hollow mm -hmm. um i think the writing in that one was just stellar mm -hmm. yeah dope but dope. Uh, one thing i love about harry potter is that and it's really hard to do this to have the same overall villain and it not get stale like each season they built baltimore up and up yeah. and up and up so that by the time we did get to the last two, it didn't feel, it wasn't anticlimactic for the final battle. It mm -hmm. felt as big as it needed to be because this has been like somebody that has been harassing this little boy <laughs> for so many years. Yeah, Voldemort was off the chain, man. Like Voldemort just ruthless. He He's one of the best villains, I feel like, in movie franchises, period. And he stayed oh, well, to himself. And even though it was, it was very schemish, it made sense how he ended up being defeated in the end. Mm -hmm. and, and honestly, to a certain degree, certain degree, I wouldn't really see no other way and stuff. So, so yeah, I definitely agree with that. And really great writing and, of course, great acting as well. And them being able to keep that up for the longest uh, was just really amazing, to be honest. Yeah. And last. <laughs> so my last one is the Mar so it's Marvel franchise, but I want to be specific, even though the overall franchise is really great, is the Marvel uh, franchise phase three. And just to remind people of like who was all in that. Uh, what all movies was in that you have Captain America, Doctor Strange, Guardians of the Galaxy 2, Spider-Man Homecoming, Thor Ragnarok, Black Panther, Avengers Infinity War, Ant-Man and the Wasp, Captain Marvel, Avengers Endgame, Spider-Man Far From Home, uh, and I think that was pretty much it. Yeah, Spider-Man Far From Home, because that was kind of like the moment where, okay, how is everything going to seem now, especially for Peter, mm -hmm. now that his hero, Iron Man, is gone? So, so yeah, so that would be that along. I have it tied with two other franchises, which ironically, I just realized is Marvel. <laughs> uh, except for, like, one is Marvel, but it actually, like, the kudos go to this, the last one that I'm going to mention, because before Marvel was a thing, this movie kind of put or this franchise kind of put it on the map to get buy-in to be able to produce. Um, I'm also going to put a tie-in with X-Men. Uh, I really enjoyed it, especially uh, Days of Future Past. I think maybe it was my favorite. I feel like it was very unique how they pretty much brought all different aspects of what they've done with uh, First Class, uh, like Blaze, Blaze was mentioning earlier, all the way to the other characters, and then the fact that I don't think it was considered a post credit scene, but the fact that after everything that happened, we got to see the original Jean Grey and Cyclops at the end, mm -hmm. which had me excited thinking they was going to bring it back. But Days of Future Past, I really feel like really wrapped up everything. It was really dope. Mm -hmm. um, along with, I guess, if you want to consider the Wolverine trilogy as well, like those are pretty damn oh, good, yeah. unique. So that's up there. And then I also have that tie with Blade. So I guess it's like Marvel Phase 3 and then Honorable Mentions or ties <laughs> between X-Men 
in the Blade trilogy, which Blade, honestly, possibly if it weren't for Blade, the Marvel franchise, the Marvel universe may or may not even existed, but Blade came to the rescue. All right. So, so yeah, so it? you say what? Aren't they re rebooting it? Yes, but they postponed production because they're seeking or they had to find they already had they they're seeking well there was differences in creativity or whatever like that excuse mm -hmm. me with the director so they had to find a new one. Ooh. um go and put, go ahead and put your um resume in you know i'm gonna put this out there just because I know that this is not the way that they're going with it, I don't think. And, you know, hey, oh, well. I actually mm -hmm. had a Blade idea at okay. one point. Basically, I was thinking, what if, and this is, I may have been in college, in undergrad still, I don't know. But anyway, my idea was, what if there was a younger, like Blade is out and about, and he's going trying to, like, he's going to clean up, you know, some vampires that's doing whatever and he runs into this younger guy that seems to have the same type of unique abilities as him like basically he's a day walker as well but he's younger and so basically he teams up with blade to fight on or wherever like that but then blade starts dealing with complications or whatever like medical issues or whatever that basically ends up leading to him passing on the torch to the new blade that moves on forward. So I did kind of have an idea on that, you know, but, you know, but I don't know. I mean, that I'm, I'm very interested to see. That's one of the franchises that I'm very interested to see how they're going to pull off. I'm kind of feeling the same way, kind of like the same vibe as them doing a biopic for Michael Jackson. I feel the same way because the, the original Blade trilogy was so freaking good. And it's like, I guess it's kind of weird for me, even though I knew it's, the first one came out maybe like super late 1990s or like early 2000s. I know it ended in the early 2000s. Mm -hmm. So it's like, it don't even feel that old to me to kind of reboot, but I understand why, because there was a whole different studio at the time. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's a very big name, you know, to hold the helm of, a blade so i'm very interested to see but yeah i don't i don't think they want my little my little thoughts to help out you never it. know you never know but hollywood sure does love to reboot some stuff because they got some stuff they're working on now to reboot yeah exactly which takes us to our real take <laughs> section so speaking of real uh reboots White Man Can't Jump, which I think I passively had heard about them bringing this out. And it's kind of funny, man, like, which I guess is smart. Like, you, I passively hear about something, then boom, here comes a trailer. And I was like, dang, like, I thought they was working on it. So, so yeah, so White Man <laughs> Can't Jump. Brain. You said what? Google is in your brain. <laughs> right, right, man. So, uh, White Man Can't Jump is uh, a new reboot that's coming out. And uh, honestly, I'm not even going to lie. The trailer looks pretty dang good. And I think they did some really good casting. So I'm very interested to see how it's going to go. I'm, I am kind of interested in seeing, seeing it. And so we'll see. And then, and I'll tell you like some of the cast that's in it. So like Jack you have, Carlo. yeah, 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 yeah. You have like Jay Carlo. I think Taylor is supposed to be in it. Yes. Yes. And what's his uh, name? Is that how you say his name? Yeah, possibly Walls. And see, yeah. I remember him in uh power, he was in power, and he was pretty good in power. So I'm interested to see how that's gonna go. So they have a really, really dope cast with this. So I feel like it'll be dope. I feel like it'd be a dope, uh, be dope. <laughs> and the other reboot that I'm just not reading now, it's not even a reboot, is The Exorcist. So apparently, Blaze is actually a sequel. Oh. That's a long time to make a That's sequel. a long time. So it's saying sequel to the 1973 film about a 12-year-old girl who is possessed by a mysterious demonic entity forcing her mother to seek the help of two priests to save her. 
That's hmm. interesting. Yeah. Yeah, and the the cast for this is kind of stacked too. You got uh Leslie Odom Jr. Okay. The seemed like I saw somebody else, but I know Leslie Odom Jr. is somebody that I'm pretty familiar with. I don't know if I know too many others at the moment. But at least him. So yeah, so um I think that may be coming out this year, possibly. Yeah, it's supposed to be coming out this year. I think it already October, has it's gonna be right? about two hours. What'd you say? I think in October. Oh, okay, cool. Yeah, I see that it's supposed to be coming out about I mean coming out. I see that it's gonna be around like two hours, so it seems like they're really gonna be heavy on the storytelling part and probably gonna be a lead to um a lead up to maybe a franchise I can see them trying to get out get out of this because I'm very interested when it comes to like the horror film and, and thriller kind of world at this moment now where it's going to go because I don't know sometimes you got to be a little bit cautious of not you know reinventing the wheel too much so I wonder mm -hmm. are they going to try to make a long franchise out of this and stuff but um, shout out to the reboots and lastly Blaze Aegis Elba is mm -hmm. building film studios in mm -hmm. Africa. All right. In the motherland. So I saw a report that said that he uh, plans on working with the country of Tanzania and I believe Ghana as well to build studios. So one in East Africa and one in West Africa, which both countries have been uh, pretty popular lately when it comes to vacation destinations and uh, some diaspora uh, going to revisit and everything like that. So um, kudos to him to uh, giving back um, to the motherland and providing an opportunity and stuff like that. But Blaze, like, you know, when you when you first saw this or whatever, what you was kind of thinking, what came to mind? Why there? You know, <laughs> to mm -hmm. be honest, why there? And so after I did like some research on it, I was like, oh, that's cool. You know, he really wants to give back or not necessarily even give back, but just bring up that mm -hmm. those filmmakers there. Mm -hmm. um, and so I was like, that's pretty cool because you don't have to do that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But that also will open up so many opportunities, not just for the filmmakers there, but for um those those portions of Africa because people are gonna want to go there and film movies there, you know. Mm -hmm. I can mm -hmm. see a lot of Marvel movies mm -hmm. um being filmed there. Yeah, yeah, definitely, definitely. I'm I'm very interested and excited as well. I'm I'm just really happy to see us being able to reconnect back to our roots um and connect. I mean, shoot, it's a reason why Netflix is creating a whole bunch of um movies and series out of Africa because it's it's really mm -hmm. it's really growing and it's a lot of talent there. I follow a lot of YouTubers and uh creatives out of Africa, especially between Nigeria and Kenya and Tanzania mm -hmm. and Ghana as well, especially Wadamaya and so and uh Teo. And so uh I'm I'm really excited. I'm happy that this is happening and and like you said this can only grow from there when it comes to helping out with exposure and 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 great opportunities too so right so, yeah, so I mean, really like excited. you said too with netflix um having so much from africa you know they got the what's it called young and african reality mm -hmm. show blood and water the nigerian yeah. queen like all those different things like honestly Idris could strike a deal with netflix and all of that stuff can be produced through there so yeah Definitely, That's def for him. <laughs> definitely, definitely. And you know, us just diaspora all, all around the world, we always kind of looking for a place that we feel like we belong and everything like that. And mm -hmm. I mean, who knows? I mean, you know, hey, as a special independent filmmaker, man, I'm having a hard time producing or affording things here. You may want to go over there and work with people over there, you know. So it's, I'm very interested to see how this kind of unfolds in the future. But definitely great news to hear about and mm -hmm. stuff like that so but other than that i think that's it for today blaze that's it that's it that that's is it, it. <laughs> well cool once again once again 
Thank you all for tuning in to another episode of the Ambitious Views podcast. Please keep on sharing. Please keep on listening in. And please let us know what you think about these episodes. And, and please always feel free to let us know what you would want us to talk about. You know, we definitely want to make sure that uh, we're engaging when it comes to different topic, topics and stuff like that. And we want to know what other things are going on out there that we may or may not uh, have mentioned. So uh, until next time, y'all take it easy.